What's up, everybody? Jackson here today with my little brother, Chubbs. What's up, everybody? And today we're going to be talking about the Go Fast Live update for Destiny 2. Go <laughs> gotta, fast, gotta Guardian! Go fast. Get some fucking speed. Speed. Rick and if Bobby. you're not first, you're fucking last, sons. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go fast, fast. And on top of that, we have Rare over here, and they're vying for the fucking throne of fucking clown shoes. <laughs> they're that like, is... hold on, we can fuck up worse. <laughs> we can do Trust worse. Trust us. Hang on. <laughs> we can do worse. <laughs> so if you don't know, we're gonna so we're gonna dance around some Sea of Thieves stuff, and then work our way into some Bungie stuff, and we're just gonna be talking about all of it so to start with see if thieves games out and comes out and everyone's ser disappointed to the max would be you know an understatement i think i think a lot of people held a lot of hype for this game it being rare it being you know microsoft they're like plugging it this is our flagship shit i think it's just their answer to no man's sky <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> hey sony thinks they're the only ones that can fucking invest heavily and market the crap out of a piece of shit Really? No, fuck you. We can do it too. <laughs> we can do it even worse. So, this game comes out. It's basically a gameplay loop that equals you getting gold for quests so that you can buy cosmetics. That is the that is the entirety of the progression system. We then see Rare come out and they're like another problem they were saying was they there was griefers so many griefers there's so many ways to grief people with the pvp in this game if well, you haven't the watched entire game just pvp well it, it's not just pvp it's... Dude, is there like a story driven mode like a <laughs> campaign not really you go you get quests you go out to sell you go to see you fucking do a quest you come back and like that's it and it's that's the gameplay loop like simple do like go fetch this go kill this specific enemy go kill this boss right right and so all of these things and then there's like this kraken that they hyped up to shit that'll randomly attack you but when you dive under the water you can't even see it there's no i'm gonna movie. recommend go watch joe angry joe's review it's fucking excellent angry joe is a great fucking reviewer dude oh yeah he he don't care he'll tell it how it is and he's that's the thing even he's like there's moments of this game where you can see where they have something here but it's just so hollow at the end yeah basically no man's sky right so rare rare comes out and they're like okay hey, but the, uh, one of the complaints addressed in joe's review as many of as well as many others that i've seen is that when you die there's no penalty so people will die they'll just regroup and sail right back to where they just died and they can continually do that and by doing that they're getting fresh supplies they're getting fresh hills they're able to just continually bombard you until eventually you die right and there's no penalty for dying so there's no way to dissent like d make it so they don't want to do it like there's the only incentive there right right it's like oh you killed us big deal bitch we'll come back yeah like, there's no there's again. no downside to this yeah so rare comes out and this is so funny this all happened within a day i was so i'd watched angry joe's review then i saw a fucking twitter title from one of the fucking people one of the fucking mainstream people i follow and it said sea of thieves is or rare is going to uh charge gold to players who die in pvp right they're gonna add a gold penalty yeah so you lost some of your gold right <laughs> i swear to god no joke i'm not making this up within two hours two fucking hours i see another tweet saying rare will be pulling back on this decision to fucking induce penalties it's like what <laughs> way to stick to your guns so rare. <laughs> remember back when you said fuck you nintendo <laughs> well nice scene has still got that spine <laughs> Uh, this game is so like this game is worse than destiny okay wow oh. it's worse than destiny one like, you could say that and so oh, you man. see this happen and it's it's like it's funny to us like we're over here laughing because oh, we yeah. didn't buy the game <laughs> like no man's sky taught us a very important lesson and for that honestly i am grateful to mr murray for being a shyster i think that he taught a lot of people to hold off on not only getting excited about something they don't yet know what it is like they don't haven't seen firsthand and experienced it because that's possible it's like uncompetitive always said and it's a great argument 
It's that if you had waited, watched a live stream, you wouldn't have got burned. Yeah. And it's fucking 100% true. The, that doesn't change any guilt on Mr. Murray or no. what he did, how he misrepresented the fuck out of it. When on national TV, like he fucking dude. That motherfucker has a lot of shit at his doorstep that I'm I'm just glad I don't have. Modern day snake oil. Yeah, like I yeah, that. exactly, dude. Came into town, took all the money and rolled the fuck out. Yep. Like just gone. Promised to bring everyone joy forever. <laughs> We're going to build this Springfield monorail. <laughs> and that if you in Joe's review, if you watch it, he pulls clips from those guys and they're saying like infinite fucking possibilities and like all these things and it, you just start to wonder like at what point are people gonna stop being hyped and realize that if, unless you're a serious reviewer like and by that i mean like angry joe fucking acg jim sterling people like that unless right. you're a serious reviewer who is making yeah. coin off of that purchase i don't see how anyone could be buying games day one I'm not going to say it's not going to work out like a lot, like that it's going to be a burn all of the time. Yeah. I'm not. I'm going to say that probably like 50, 60% of the time, you're going to be happy with what you got. You're going to be happy with your purchase, whether it's day one or down the road a little later after the month, you know, it's been out, whatever. It's like Far Cry 5. I'm hearing nothing but good things about that from people who love the Far Cry games. They're saying it amps it up and does this weird, like they're saying it's, a, it's, but then I've heard that it's very samesy. Right. Right? So as someone who's not a huge fucking fan of Far Cry games, like my favorite Far Cry games are Blood Dragon and Primal. Right? <laughs> yeah. Those are the only two I've completed. I didn't complete three. I made it about halfway through. Didn't complete four. Made it about halfway through. Right. I just started playing other things and got out of it. It was just at a certain point. And it, I, I had played Primal before that. And Primal just was, I, I felt the atmosphere more in Primal. I felt the setting more in Primal. Like, it just felt more visceral in Primal. That and one thing that I really like with Primal. And Blood Dragon's just fucking awesome. Primal, though, the melee weapons, is that was the first time that you could do that, really. Yeah. The melee weapons, like the clubs and how you can, like, throw them at people. And the oh, yeah. two-handed clubs. Well, and, I don't know if know. that's the first time you could do that, but I think it was the first time with the melee. Like, that was the thing. It took away overpowered weapons. Yeah, it took away guns, and it, yeah. like, brought it down to more... Well, it was primitive. primal. Yeah. <laughs> that's why That's why it stood out to me. Yeah. It's because it was so different from all the other Far Cry games. Well, and it felt like with the writing, with the story, it felt like they tried to make it a little more interesting, at least to me personally. I, maybe it's just because of personal taste. I was more interested in that setting of, like, primal, you know, like, right. BC. Prehistoric yeah, time. Yeah, like, prehistoric shit, shit. Yeah. yeah. So, like, maybe it's just that, and the other ones just didn't hold me but I felt like the writing was better. I, I was not disinterested in Far Cry Primal at yeah, any point. Yeah, right. The thing is, is that's what happens if you buy day one. Like, if you buy these games day one, and honestly, if you look at, like, past, it's almost 100% the games that are hyped up the most that end up being the worst let down. Oh, yeah. Now, is that because they, they, they put these unreal expectations in our faces? Yeah, I think I think that's a huge part of it. I think that the games that are hyped up the most have the most blowback because of that reason. Because you're out there on stage like a fucking greatest showman or whatever. Right. There's and you're just, you're like, oh. There's look. more money going into the marketing than there is going into the actual development of the game. And exactly. so at that point, it's, that's why the most hyped games are the most let down. Is because there's very real actual development going into the gameplay and smoothing out the aspects of the actual game. Then there is uh, just fluffing it out there and throwing it out there all over television, internet, yeah. commercials, advertisements. So, and here's the other problem you get into is at that point, who is who is to shoulder the blame? Because there seems to be, even in Joe's review, one thing I did not like was when he was he made the comment basically that Rare had been fucked over by Microsoft, or basically almost in an apologetic way, like I'm sorry that you didn't get the money you needed, or 
You know what I mean? Like, at right. what point is the guy it's from Sony. Rare? It's not yeah. No Man's Yeah, it's Sky. Sony. I heard it's, it all the time. It's, it was it's, Sony unfair it's deadline. Activision. They didn't it's give them not the money Bungie. they needed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Destiny, it's Activision. It's not Bungie. Yeah. It's Activision. Exactly. So at what point do we start letting these developers shoulder the blame of things that they've said? Like, it was a fucking Rare, you know, director of the game that was out on E3 saying infinite possibilities and all of this shit. Oh, yeah. Right? It was Sean fucking Murray who did the same thing. So, like, at what point are we going to hold these people responsible as well? And I think that's a huge problem because it's allowed these games that get fluffed, that get, you know, blown up, and that are wildly mediocre, that are, like, very, you know, at the end of the day, very good-looking and have a huge production, obviously so. Well, yeah. But it better. End, yeah, exactly, because there's a lot of fucking Because you're money. spending fucking $60 on this. This isn't some indie title game that you're getting for 20 to $40. This yeah, is a full exactly. AAA title. Exactly. It should have some goddamn production value to it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like with Destiny. It's what you got was hollow, empty, and then eventually, yeah, it got better. Yeah. But are we is that is that okay? Like is Rare's game the next Destiny? Is it going to be a Sea of Thieves going to be amazing once they fix it? Is everyone going to I mean they tried to do it with No Man's Sky. If they fix it. Sean Murray uh, they con, Sean Murray and Hello Games constantly updated No Man's Sky. But the thing added is added shit to it to the point now where there's like race tracks and all sorts of other bullshit, right? But that's what it is. It's all bullshit. But still the fucking games media comes out and they're like fucking No Man's Sky is funner to play now. No Man's Sky, ongoing, ongoing game award by PC Gamer. Oh ongoing God. game award. That's an award being given out now. Ongoing game. No Man's Sky. So is that what we're going to see with Sea of Thieves? You know what I mean? Yeah. I guarantee you it is. Probably. Well, they're going to have to. Well, and another thing is this another update it's almost as bad as an old man's sky too how big of an update <laughs> oh was this oh my god and what does does this even add content or address the fucking reward system or the progression system or I, anything? these are these are bug fixes we're to spend more time shrinking the update or get these bug fixes out now <laughs> that's their justification so, for this 19 so this is a 19.53 gigabyte 19 download 19 gigabytes to your game <laughs> that is nothing but bug fixes $60 game bought and sold and pre-order bought and you've had this game on sale for how long like when did the pre-order become available like at what point are we going to start holding these fucking people accountable but it's because their options were to spend more time shrinking the update or get these bug fixes out now. Oh, well, good thing they did the right Way thing. Way to stick to your guns again, Rare. <laughs> Once more, nice to see you're still holding out to show your fucking love and care for the consumer to make sure they get a finished product. Yeah, it's so beautiful to see. It's so beautiful to watch these companies work. <laughs> and then you look at Destiny, Destiny 2, the Go Fast Go Patch. Fast! <laughs> Ghost Fast Patch brings big buffs to PvE weapons and speeds up supers. 1.1.14 makes a lot of small changes that add up to a big one. <laughs> it is now Tuesday afternoon in the Eastern Time Zone and right now on schedule, the Destiny 2 1.1.4 up patch update. Fuck me in the mouth. That's the Go Fast one. Chicken That's the Go Fast Chicken one. Mini. Good job with your ads, PC gamer. Fucking you fuck. Well, they're sucking. Don't Destiny make money off dick. us talking shit. And look, they're like, <laughs> see, they win either way, guys. I can they imagine this person way. on the other side of this article, <laughs> like with a pot of coffee, and he's just all jacked up and jittery, like, oh my god, it's Tuesday afternoon in the Eastern Time Zone right now. It's scheduled. The fucking patch is live, and oh my god, I'm gonna fucking play the shit out of that. Oh my god, it's gonna be great. It's the go fast one, chubs, and it's live. We already got a pretty good idea of what's in store, and now the full patch notes are here to lay out all the details. The overall theme, in case the name isn't clear enough, is making things happen more quickly. And by things, in quotations, 
I mean the infliction of death and destruction upon everything that moves. <laughs> Who is this? The AI from Battleborn? This is the fucking Andy Chuck. Andy Chuck. It's you... the AI from Destiny. It's the Dinklebot. He has the Dinklebot sense He has the Dinklebot. Look at how much he fluffs this shit up, though, dude. Like... They, they, if this isn't clear that you're like fucking doing Activision and fucking Bungie a favor right now, what is? Mm -hmm. Like, you're not fucking looking at this and bringing people news about it. You're fluffing the shit up. You're fluffing it up, man. Upon everything that moves, pulse rifles, scout rifles, hand cannons, sidearms, CMGs, linear fusion rifles, shotguns, and sniper rifles, oh my, have all had their PVE damage boosted anywhere from 15 to 50 percent, depending on the type, and have been tweaked in various other ways as well. Sidearm, ac sidearm accuracy and ammunition inventory have been boosted. For instance, while well, linear fusion rifles and sniper rifles have increased aim assist. For notable, the notable exception here are the meta dominated auto rifles. Precision auto rifles have had both their range and their aim assist decreased, dude. Super regeneration rates have also been cut from 640 to 5. And the sprint speed of melee supers, Fists of Havoc, Sentinel Shield, and Arc Staff will automatically be set to the fastest possible movement speed when supers are active. Likewise, the mobility stat, which has generally been overlooked in favor of resilience and recovery, has also been boosted to provide a significant boost in player speed across the board. <laughs> Classes are also oh, being hastily man. individually. <laughs> Tides will move farther and faster via increases in distance moved via untargeted shoulder strikes and boosts to strafe and catapult with. Oh my god. Arc staff animations have been sped up so hunters can get to the killing more quickly and the area of effect has been increased so they can do it more effectively. And warlocks will enjoy increased speed and maneuverability when they use their glide ability. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> PvPers will have more time to claim kills and assists in quick play modes and will earn increased super energy rewards for their efforts, which combined should make the Crucible a match more mu danger a much more dangerous place. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> this pa fucking... Power weapons <laughs> <laughs> Rocket this Launchers. Is like... This is where I'm just gonna interject here when he says power weapons. Rocket launchers, sniper rifles. If you are someone who thinks that a sniper rifle belongs in the same category right. as a fucking rocket launcher, you probably work for fucking Bungie, and that and you're probably responsible for Destiny 2, and that's probably the reason that the game is shit. It's like that, yeah. that alone is such a dumb fucking change. Oh yeah. They took steps back. <laughs> I remember playing Steps it and being like, back. where's all my, all the, where's all these weapons that I want to equip? Like, from Destiny 1 to 2, I was like, it's the same game, so the same weapon slots. Yeah. And then a fucking shotgun was my heavy. I'm, what? Yeah. You mean, you think that a shotgun is comparable to a fucking missile launcher. To a fucking grenade launcher. To a fucking Gatling gun. Shotgun? <laughs> shotgun? Gatling gun. Luke Smith. This Destiny 2, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fucking clown. Dude, it's a joke. And honestly, that's the thing I hate the most is reading this. Because while I'm reading this and I'm seeing how he fluffs it, right. I just question, like, where were idiots like this when Battleborn had their winter update? Oh, yeah. Where was all the fluff on it? Yeah. Like, how come it's only Activision who happens to, like, clean clocks in the fucking industry as far as money? that always get this sort of treatment and this sort of hype. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird. It's almost like you work for them. Since it's you're not true. being critical ever about this game. You either ever. work for them or you are way too much invested in this game. Let's see what Andy Chalk writes. are blinding you. Oh, Andy Chalk, Andy Chalk writes about KFC bucket emotes. And to more racist abuse, that might have to be its own goddamn fucking article. What is that? Wow. People are dumb. Blizzard kicks off. Oh, look, a Blizzard fucking article. Oh, I know a fucking Activision product story. Oh, look, an Activision product story. Oh. Fucking oh. Andy <laughs> Bungie. Another one. Oh, Far Cry 5. Dog can be healed by <laughs> rubbing his tummy. 
Oh, dude. He fluffs. He fluffs them. They all fluff them, This dude. is the guy over there fucking on their dick to make sure they're hard. Now, the thing about this is, is I don't understand how anyone can take this update seriously. This update does nothing but tweak everything backwards, doesn't it? Isn't this all things that I, I know for sure that the well, super rate was in, in, and, increased for Destiny 2. And PvE. The, yeah, your powers were increased. So, like, your grenade and your fucking melee ability were increased. And they were tweaking the damage all the time in the PvE, too. Like, I remember when the shotguns got a huge damage but, uh, bo but boost yeah. i almost said boof <laughs> boof <laughs> this game's a fucking boof man <laughs> a la boof a la boof <laughs> this this game but that's the thing is this is all stuff that was like present in destiny one because they were i remember them doing all this stuff you know yeah well I mean? it's all it's all planned to step back like that's that's the point is they they finally realized that okay so what we did they didn't like and i think the fans realized that the moment it came out i know i did yeah. i was playing it and i was like dude this is just like destiny one but worse in so many ways and i yeah. can't believe that i can say that right now and that's that hold meaning like this is worse than destiny one. Oh yeah it is a step backwards because all the people behind destiny one are no longer there and what they did is they took their skeleton and they like animated it it and there's like this fucking dumb way put on strings and yeah. like made it dance on the stage and it, you can tell that it's like okay you can see it there like when you're in some of those places in destiny 2 i was watching our stream the other night just to like be refreshed on the game since you know it only took us 11 hours to beat 11 hours 11 hours to do 99 percent of the content what the fuck are you doing this 60 dollar <laughs> title <laughs> Oh. <laughs> but you have to play it every day yeah. and every week because there's a lockout and a cap on currency. And don't worry, we're going to bring back the go we're going to bring a go fast update that gonna, will fix everything. We'll, it will make you guys go fast. We will eventually revert the transformed Frankenstein of Destiny 2 back to the original form of Destiny 1. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Which is sad because Destiny 1 is a fucking god awful fucking game. Like, those games are bad, dude. But the Taken King expansion, that's what I felt like Destiny 2 felt the most to me. I felt like it was more the It was definitely. King it had that anything else. Because it had grind, but it also had, like, a more spontaneous sort of grind. Yeah. Where there was more things to take part in. But at the end of the day, it was still just a grind. Yeah. It's kind of like what Diablo 3 did. I, You know, which is funny since, you know, I'm pretty sure it was Diablo 3 devs that were responsible for the entire grind update with the Taken King. Yeah. Since we know that they were brought over by were... Activision to help Bungie. Because Bungie's made up of a bunch of idiots to who don't know what the fuck they're doing. System. Whose idea of bringing meaningful content to justify their fucking microtransactions that make millions of dollars is to fucking give us crimson days here's crimson days it's a holiday with the twos playlist remember when we could race each other on the sparrows remember all the money we made <laughs> i remember that we do because we still have it all because we didn't spend shit on this second one <laughs> yep fucking reused assets fucking dude <laughs> and, and lined all of our pockets from the bottom to the top motherfucker <laughs> Oh, the talentless hacks. It's almost like the more money involved in these games also, there's just like a level of incompetence that is amazing to me. Oh, yeah. It's like, look at Mass Effect Andromeda. Not a horrible game in my opinion. Not a horrible, awful, worthless yeah. game in my opinion. Yeah. Okay? Right. Still. <laughs> On release. Like, yeah, dude. And even then, like, still, like, the writing was very fucking just like, yeah. eh. You know, and the fucking, it's just like, it felt like they were retreading the same ground as the first three. And it's like, why didn't I just play the first three? Because that character didn't walk like an idiot. You know what I mean? Well, he did kind of jog like an idiot. But. You can do the Commander Shepard run. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my point. Like, look how much money was involved in that. Like, people say that was done for cheap. $80 million. All right. Like, that. if that's cheap to you, all right. Like, that's not cheap. That's a lot of fucking money. That's a lot of money. I see indie developers do with a fraction of that 
create a game that may not look as fancy and may not sound as fancy and may not have the same production value, but has infinitely more satisfying game mechanics, things that keep you engaged. Right. You know what I mean? It's like Dark Fagan was saying on a video. He was talking about this salt game. And it's it's he said it doesn't look as good as Sea of Thieves, but it's better. Right. It's better. It's got more things to do, yeah. more of a progression. Yeah, more of a reason to play than just like, here, go farm gold, come back, buy these cosmetics. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing, everybody! <laughs> Thanks for playing. And so that's... The, at what point, with Sea of Thieves, Destiny, are we going to get to the point where people stop defending corporate entities? Like it's their like like Bungie is like your they life. can't be touched. Yeah, like Bungie shouldn't be criticized because it's Activision's fault, really. Right. Really? Well, the, the, here's the thing about that: is Destiny made how much money, and Bungie had how much time? Like Bungie should have been able to tell Activision to shut the fuck up, and Activision would have stayed quiet. With how much money they were raking in for them. Oh yeah. Right. So oh, I'm yeah. not gonna put this Pre down. I'm not. I, you're not gonna fucking tell me that Destiny One was bad because of Activision, and Destiny Two is also bad because of Activision and the game made how much fucking money i'm not gonna hear it at that point you're just lying not only to me but to yourself oh yeah go look in the mirror and see if you can swallow that bullshit do it i'm, I'm curious because i'm not gonna fucking hear it anymore i heard it from fucking destiny when they dropped the taking king and they cut everyone off and they fucking this was a game that you were going to be paying into and then they said oh we're doing microtransactions to bring free content Oh, blah, blah, blah. Everybody I have was this, like, I don't care. I won't spend microtransactions. I have this great argument with this fucking Destiny idiot, right, on one of these videos. I was looking at it the other day. His basic thing was like, you. it was on one of my fucking Destiny 2 videos. Might have been the beta one I did. When me and you did the beta. Right. But my whole point with the video was like, I'll rent this game. I'll beat it in one fucking night. And I'll have footage to talk shit on it for the next year. Right, and I still didn't use any more of the footage past the review, cause fuck that game. It's not worth using footage, yeah. in my opinion. Like I'll throw a little t little bit here and there every now and then as an example, but that's it. Yeah, cause that game isn't worth being hyped, right? And I'm not gonna talk shit on the game and then oh, but here's me playing it. Shows, and... yeah. Unless no. it's unless it's a review unless it's and it's to something point yeah. out something or to make a point within the game itself and to show people like oh look this is the reason why this is like an example you know? yeah well you have all these youtubers now that have sprung up even after b dobbins even just like so many right and the whole point of their channel is is it's like the antithesis to like a more console channel or like I, someone showed us one the other day someone linked it, the shadow hound or something just your basic destiny fluff boy but there so b dobbins was the antithesis the antithesis to that right like right. it's the, the opposite it's the answer to that like right. if you're going to exist so is this right and there's people that have sprung out of that who upload just as much as more console and all of it is destiny footage but instead of being like on the destiny hype train you know chugging to come they're they're, they're you know yeah they're like this game and this company is worthless i hate this game so much i can't stop playing it i play it all day every day but i you know what i mean yeah so like that's why i don't like to use footage of it like fuck it but that was the point of my the point of my video our video was like we will rent this we will beat it in a night one night and return it the next day bam be done with you Okay, and so I got in this argument with this kid and he's like, you need to quit talking shit on this game because what if it's really good? You're going to look really stupid then, aren't you? And I was like, he basically said, you know what he said? He's like, you're going to be eating crow. Eating crow. <laughs> you're going to be eating crow. I'm like, bitch, I'm going to be counting crows counting with fucking crow. Mr. Jones and me. <laughs> That's first of all, sir. Second of all, I've been talking, this is what I said. I basically said, I've been talking shit on Destiny and Bungie since I got onto their game. And that was when the Taken King dropped. I have been right. 100 percent of the time since then oh, that yeah. they would do what they've done since then destiny 2 will fucking suck there's no crow in sight and look at this shit look at this shit 
wildly hated by everyone. Even though, even people like that. You know what I mean? But that video was down clicked to shit. Oh yeah. B. Dobbins videos got down clicked to shit when he was like, don't oh, yeah. buy it. He was buying it because he was going to play it and review it. But now that they're all starting to open up. I don't know why. And that's like... the thing though. You can red box shit. So I don't even know why people are buying Like, I don't even know why B. Dobbins would buy it. Like, why even buy it, dude? Right. Why even give Bungie like 60 fucking dollars? Yeah. But I think, he, I think he wanted to get the fucking season pass. Just in case they added, like, I don't know, dude. I don't know why you why you bought that game, but the thing is, is at the end of the day, you look at this the situation with Rare, whether it be uh, fucking Sea of Thieves, No Man's Sky, Destiny, Battlefront Two, which is now looking better, but still, it's like at release. Look at this fucking setup for it. Look at the a pay to win, you know, loot yeah. progression. Look towards like the bare bones skin con or, you know, the bare bones games with cosmetic or microtransaction based things within those. And that's the point of and them. And if you look at them, it's like all of them are triple A games. Even, um, yeah, because even Destiny, the cosmetics, yeah, thieves. even the cosmetics or the loot boxes in Destiny were always defended as being only cosmetic. Yeah. The same argument with fucking Overwatch. The same argument with CSGO, I suppose. The same argument with all these games that have them, that originated them, that proliferated them upon the industry to where now they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Fucking everywhere. You can't get away from these things. The Shadow of Mordor or whatever that one Exactly. Was. You fucking Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah. They're everywhere. They're in Horizon Zero Dawn. You don't have... You can't, you can't buy, buy them, them but they're money, there. But you can they're there. Them. Maybe that decision was made that we don't want to do it, but they were there. Yeah, they're there. They are there. That's the thing. Like, at what point do we stop and say, hey, the only cosmetic argument doesn't work anymore. We were wrong, and it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. I promise. As someone who's been wrong 90% of my life, I promise you it's okay to be wrong. But the thing is, is that at that point, you need to look at like, okay, this is happening. This is something that happened. This is something that happened. This is something that happened. You know what I mean? Sea of Thieves is dropped and it's a fucking grind only to get cosmetic situation. Overwatch is the biggest top selling game of all time. Like most fluffed, not of all time. That's a bold statement. But Blizzard has sold so many copies of that. PUBG. Right? And it's all about. We're all about. And just cosmetics. think about the cosmetics. Look at the cosmetics that people say don't matter. Think of how much more would be on offer from games like Overwatch if they didn't have that crutch. If everyone was like, no, if you're dealing out cosmetic items in a loot box fashion i'm not buying your game i'm not playing your game if everyone did that imagine how much more would be on offer by that company think of how much more would be on offer with sea of thieves right if it didn't have this over bloated marketing budget like you were saying like oh, yeah. i'm sure so much money went to well, fucking and marketing. Thing... they fucking shot a dude out of a cannon oh yeah did you see that i showed you oh, that right yeah you did i was like that's how the fuck you market a game yeah right there <laughs> and then look at what happens yeah. <laughs> it's true they have like a huge marketing budget but then <laughs> when it comes down to the game the whole point is what to farm cosmetics yeah. that is the end game you get nothing but cosmetics at the end game you don't level up you don't get skill points you can't level up your ship you can't add things that's to your exactly ship. How you it can't is. customize shit no i think you can change the way the ship looks so skins yes yeah, again cosmetics Just skins. again cosmetics yeah true these are things that clearly affect your game if they are such a point where they're like oh well, the, <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't know how much money they had to put into the development the of the game. Is, it doesn't matter because it's rare and they should fucking know better. But they say, okay, we have this much money for marketing, this much money for game development. And instead of making the actual game a uh, well-fleshed-out, fully-fledged, <clears throat> story-driven, you know, hours endless I with think, an end game. I think they, it's cosmetics because yeah. they can sell to you that shit later and make more money off of that. 
Well, also, you have to call into question if it's not just that they were going to sell them. Who says that's their intention? Because people at this point are fanatical about skins. Oh, yeah. You see people open hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of loot boxes a month just to get that rush from getting the skins. You got people, I can't remember his name, but he was commenting about his cousin. And all he does is play games like that so he can fucking get skins and like CSGO, fucking PUBG. So that they can sell them and add money to their Steam account so they can buy more. Okay, so it's like, that's the thing. Like, people are, it's a carnival game kind of happening behind the scenes. That is now becoming the game. Because it, to, in Rare's perspective, why not? Look at the most popular games. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. What's the point of the most popular the games? The cosmetics are in everything. Think about it. You can customize how you look in almost all the AAA titles that have come out. Yeah, but the thing about the cosmetics is it should be, well, it, dude, honestly, it should be constructed into the game. Yes. It should be a reason. So if yes. I get something that changes the way my character's head looks, it should give me stats of some sort. It should give me something. Right? So then there's also an interlaid reason to pick the cosmetic. It adds it's like the Witcher to the yeah. gameplay. It's like yeah. The Witcher 3, Skyrim, basically anything where you can have, oh, look, my character has a different chest piece now. My character has a different pants now. Right. And your character changes. It looks, you know, different. But it's interlaid with this boost, this stat. And it gives you this. And it, you know, helps you in this situation. So it's like a point to it. It's not just like, here here's a fucking skin that's what i hated about like horizon zero dawn and assassin's creed origins is it was like cool paper doll cutouts that's what you know oh yeah i i'm not p equipping anything that's giving me any bonus it's like in uh, assassin's creed origins yeah in horizon zero dawn it's like a minuscule of a difference and the best one i happen to not like the way it looks right but it's the one that has that stuff on it yep. it's the sacred it's fucking the one thing. that's gonna make you it's OP the one with the fuck. shield yeah so like i have to pick that one and now aloy looks like this and there's nothing i can do about it except for change her overall experience her overall skin with another paper doll cutout that doesn't have this cool shit so because this cool shit is on this thing i have to have it on this thing they said you don't get to decide what these stats go to you don't get to pick out the choice, right? You get paper doll cutouts. This is what it looks like. And that's the Assassin's Creed origin down to a T. Yep. It was just like, here's a skin. Here's a skin. Yep. Here's a skin. It does nothing. No bonuses, no incentive to pick one, you know, outfit over one, another. Yeah. And that, at that point, it's just like, it's so dumb. I don't even care. Like, I'll cosplay in fucking, like, Dark Souls. Where I can fucking look at shit and be like, oh, well, this is good. And, you know, I can wear this and that, you know, there's another layer added to it. Right. Whereas in this, it's like, <sighs> Sea of Thieves, all of them, it's pointless. It's just pointless shit to put on so you look different. And it's like, at the end of the day, at what point are people going to stop with the cosmetics only argument? It doesn't affect the gameplay. Just stop with that argument. It's just how you look. When are people going to wake up and say, okay, we were wrong. Let's stop buying these games and patronizing these companies. They're going to do this. Because they go away. They go away. Oh, yeah. They go away. The only reason they're here is because people buy them by the dozens and dozens and dozens. It's because Overwatch can do like $9 billion on just microtransactions. $9 billion. I think that's right. It might be. Oh, it might be less. It's give or take. No, you're probably right. It's probably ridiculously. It's a high lot number. of money. These microtransactions are raking in tons and tons of money. They're... A ridiculously obscene amount of money, and oh, yeah. games are getting worse. What does that tell you? They make more money, and games get worse because there's no reason to work extra hard on this game. Yeah. There's no reason there's to no go reason out of our way. There's no reason to care for added intricacies to the gameplay or a depth or layer to the story. There's no care about the actual game. It's like, we have a formula. We know this is going to make money and this is how we're going to do it to have it make the most amount of money. And that's the way it is. And that's how you end up with destiny Two doing the same thing they did with destiny one 
Fuck up, apologize, release a patch. Yep. Fuck up, apologize, release a patch. And continue to, de to develop the game that you've already sold over a year ago. Yep. Almost a year ago. I don't still, even know. It's been a still. while. Still in development. Then go sea fast! Of Thieves. Yeah, and then Sea of Thieves. You know, like fucking yeah. 19 gigabyte fucking download. Fucking 19 gigs, 19 guys. fucking gigabyte download for bug fixes. I hope you enjoy the content drop. Probably fucking 75 gigs. For fucking <laughs> bug fixes. Yeah, this is just bug fixes. A game that's been on sale for pre-order and done been released. Yep. And 19 gigs because it was either spend more time shrinking or fix them all so everybody can quit complaining. Yep. And they'd rather have you people quit complaining and not give a shit about like how, what, how big of a fucking file you have on your system. They don't care about the space on your fucking hard drive. Yeah, they don't care. That's They're just the getting it out there. They're just like, okay, so this game has this much more to it now and now that you've bought it and you've already spent money on it now we're gonna invade you with more download time yeah and it's like i i don't know it's just a fucking awful way to do games and we wanted to talk about it because i i i find it fucking ridiculous that there's still youtube channels fluffing destiny 2 that this this because it's not gonna end it won't they will continually do this they will fuck you over and fuck you over and fuck you over and fuck you over. They have been doing it since Destiny 1 released. They have never stopped fucking over the consumer. Ever. Not once. Every move they made, every big update, every huge change was a fucking slap to the face in the, in the face of the consumer. Of everybody who was buying it from the beginning and continually pulling money out of their wallets and giving it to them. Well, even people who buy it at the end. Because now all the people are gone and there's everyone's sick of it. Yeah. But the funny thing is, is Destiny 1 has more concurrent players than Destiny 2. What does that tell you? That tells you that the magic has left the building, ladies and gentlemen. Since Bungie and Destiny 2, Luke Smith, that is the game that they are responsible for. That is the current Bungie's game. Enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for me, Jackson. The fat lady has sung Luke. Luke Skywalker? Smith. Luke Smith is the fat lady. <laughs> the fat lady sung. <laughs> Luke Smith is the fat lady that sings. But he sings while he checks his bank account and sees how much money he made off of that game. Because that's the thing. Like, people, I, I read comments when they do these fluff pieces on Twitter. You know, I'll go and I'll scroll through the comments. And you'll see people who are just like, we still play it. It's we. It has a thriving community of people who really enjoy this game, uh -huh. and they get defensive. And then other uh -huh. people are like, other people are like, yeah, I bought this and deleted it the next day. <laughs> it's like, okay, you bought it. Way to fucking. Way to show Bungie by deleting yeah. it by giving them your money and fucking taking the game. You could have fucking spent fucking three bucks like we did, six in total. Anyway, that's it for us. Fucking love you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being awesome. Let us know down below what you think. Like, what's another example, one we didn't get to, of these sort of day one early access AAA titles that are just fucking ridiculously shallow or and just empty? Fumbling all over the place. Yeah. The game, like, drops and releases, and they're like, oh, God! Ah! <laughs> what do we do <laughs> ah they're running Didn't around fucking, oh my god i mean there's dude there's other companies to be talked about i know it but the thing is is that i've just stopped paying attention yeah. i've curbed my hype because it's at this point everyone. i'm like i have games i enjoy i have games i know i will enjoy once i'm done with those games so i'm not in a hurry to pick up anything else yeah like i know games that i'll enjoy and i know that i can get them and i know that i'll get them for cheap and like i'm not gonna get worried about paying a bunch when i just have all these you know cheaper games that i haven't played that are actually really good yeah that i know are good because they've been out for fucking years and i can go look at a review and say oh this is a good game yeah i'll buy this one you know what i yeah. mean 
So like that's that's why I'm, I I mean if we miss someone that's why but this seems to be happening all over the goddamn place and it's happening way more frequent. I mean there's like you said Shadows of War, you know fucking uh, Battlefront of War, Two, Overwatch, Titanfall, Overwatch, Call Titan. of Duty. I wouldn't put Overwatch in the list. I would say Overwatch belongs in a in a separate category. I'm saying like just I'm bare saying bones, games, yeah, bare bones they, games. That's like where I'm standing from. Okay. You know what I mean? Overwatch, I, throw all of these I would say Overwatch is bare bones compared to everything else Blizzard has done before Hearthstone and that and like the only games they work on now. Heroes of the Storm. Right. Like they work on those three games because they make them tons of money. You know what I mean? And they're all the most shallow Blizzard games. Yeah. For sure. For sure. But yeah, that's anyway. That's the thing about Overwatch is fucking we'll lose subscribers. People get fucking butt hurt when you talk shit on that game. Well, hey, it's nothing personal against you if you enjoy it. It's just for People me where get I'm fucking standing. Mad, from, dude. I played World of Warcraft and I dumped so many hours into that, and it was actually a BlizzCon World of Warcraft expo where they were talking about overwatch the next mmo and i'm like oh my god it's gonna be fucking awesome first person shooter mmo and me and you were like thinking about all the ways that they could yeah. do it right and then overwatch comes out pvp only experience no character customization no role playing experience just the pvp only experience that's all it was and just that is one game just mode. team fortress 2 and it's one game mode it's like all yeah right. They have more than one game mode, but it's all amounts to the same thing. That's the thing about Overwatch is it's it's one of those games I don't understand why it's so popular. Yeah. I can't comprehend any other reason than the addictive nature of loot boxes. And the socially accepting way that those loot boxes have always been portrayed by everyone. Yeah. Any big up there. And all those people don't want to admit they were wrong. Like, you'll never hear Total Biscuit come out and say, hey, I was wrong. About like, the those. loot boxes in Overwatch are fucked. Yeah. They're going to lead. The, the, you know, I should have said that. They led to some bad things. Like, he'll never come out and say that. You know, they're only cosmetic. They don't matter. Right? They're not. They don't affect the gameplay at all. Yeah. And that's, that's the gist of this video, is they do. They fucking have, and they fucking will. Anyway, once again, we'll outro. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else you want to say, Chubbs? Nah. All right. Fucking, you sure? Fat lady is sung. Luke has sung the Luke. smith. <laughs> I want to hear your opera voice, bro. Dude. Sing me Pavarotti. I just don't even understand. Because the thing is, is it's not even like there's going to be any repercussions for Destiny 2. Because they just still, they sold so many fucking copies. Yep. It's like, no matter what, we lose. You know, like, I've been right, sure. But they've kept on making money. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll go play something else. Alright, everybody. Fucking love you. Until next time, stay awesome, stay safe. And as always, stay smart.